Well, it was finally disclosed in an interview with NPR. A couple of years ago, we began the process of testing them to see, first of all, if they worked, and second, if uh, they could be deployed without unduly restricting the flow of traffic. And mm. the good news is that we were able to demonstrate that they were successful. We could use them without slowing up traffic, and we could also protect privacy. In your current role as a consultant, do you have an interest in body scanners? Or... I, you know, I, to be, we consult with all kinds of firms, including firms that do manufacture body scanners. You do have some some interest in, uh, in, in, in more sales of body scanners. Uh, as well as a lot of other security measures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's even more. RabbitScan's parent company is OSI Systems, Inc. Now, who owns 11,000 shares of that company? Spooky dude, George Soros. George, do you own shares of the RabbitScan plays? This is crazy. No, no. Let's make sure Glenn Beck gets his facts right. Because that's just, that's crazy talk. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Technically, I want to be completely honest with you. He does not own 11,000 shares of OSI, the body scanning thing. No, no, no. He did two days ago. But now he sold the 11,000. He went from 11,000 to zero two days ago. Isn't that odd? It's almost like they know someone in the media is on to them. Where's the rest of the media? Oh, that's, that's right, I forgot. The storybook dating updates of Prince Fred and whatever her name is. It's so great. Something's not right with this story. There's no common sense being applied, and there is smoke. The president knows how to give a good speech, right? I mean, isn't that the one thing he's good at? Oh, I can give a good speech. He knows how to use propaganda every time something goes wrong. Why didn't the American people do it? Because he didn't give a good enough speech, right? Watch. What I haven't always been successful at doing is breaking through the noise and speaking directly to the American people. It's a matter of persuading people mm. uh, and giving them confidence and bringing them together uh, and setting a tone. Uh, and making an argument uh, that uh, people can understand. Okay. And uh, I think that uh, we haven't always been successful at that. Okay, so sometimes he just, he can't make the argument clear enough. He can't break through the noise. So I just want to play the highlights of the speeches here that he has given to convince you where he hasn't been able to say, find the right set of words um, some of the highlights here on, on the speech is where it's important for you to be groped or your children to be groped at the airport for security reasons. Here they are. <laughs> oh, I forgot. He hasn't given one. Isn't that weird? He hasn't given a speech. Now, why would this administration be pushing policies that make no common sense, enrich his friends, disenfranchise the people with the government, and not once Explain them or give a speech. Create tension, fear, anger, division between people and the government, and not give a speech. Wow, what do you suppose the what do you suppose the end of that is? Now, let me, may I show you the last line from my book, Broke? Here it is. Our government has found out how much injustice Americans are willing to quietly accept, but it is yet to see what happens when we've had enough. <gasps> hmm. Is somebody hoping that maybe... No, that's too cynical. You know what they're doing in Europe? They're using dogs for security. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Israel, they're using psychological profiling, and it works. Reports suggest that dogs are more effective than scanners. We're spending stimulus dollars on scanners, though, and our former DHF chief is making money on it, and George Soros is making money on the scanners. Who would get rich if we bought a bunch of dogs? Hmm. Nobody. I guess we shouldn't buy dogs. Is that what this is about? The money? Or is it something else? Leave it to Glenn Beck. <laughs> of course he thinks it's about something else. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> and I'll show you the reason next. You've been pushed a lot in the last two years. Stimulus. Anybody really want that? 787000 After TARP? <laughs>
got jammed through anyway. Health care bill, most people opposed. Most people in Congress opposed it, but they had bribed their way through. You got to see what's in it after we pass it, really. Most people in America support Arizona's immigration law. This administration condemns Arizona. Why are they doing all of this? Well, we've shown you who this administration is in bed with over the last two years. Radicals who are hostile to the republic. And also in bed with people who want to fundamentally transform America. The head of the AFL-CIO, Richard Trumpka, came out this week and how he talked about how he is, quote, working diligently with lawmakers and the White House. So they're buds. They're buds. We got it. Now I want you to listen to this man, Scott Marshall. Not only did, did the campaigning take place from union halls, et cetera, et cetera, but this time, as uh, Trump told us when he was in Chicago, they began the, the nuts and bolts of building independent labor campaign organizations in, in five key cities around the country. That's great. Isn't it? This, is, this is wonderful. Scott Marshall, Labor Commission chairperson for the Communist Party. Got it? I'm working there with uh, Richard Trumpka when he was in town. He was telling me that we're really. During the late 1990s, the AFL-CIO sus suspended their statute that communists weren't allowed in the union. I've asked several times, never heard an answer. Why would you do that? I mean, unless you want to have more communists in the union. So you have the communists in bed, their words, in bed with the AFL-CIO. The AFL-CIO in bed with the White House. Are you surprised Van Jones was there? Communists are coming out of the woodwork, the revolutionaries, and nobody in the media seems alarmed. Earlier this month, the New York Times wrote a glowing article about the fun-loving communists who meet here in New York. The name of the story? Where Marxists Make Merry. <laughs> they treat these people as if this is like a third grade class on a field trip to the crayon factory. Have they forgotten who communists really are and how many millions of people communists have killed? Well, the rest of the media is off trying to get their millionth picture of Prince Jake and his fiance, Princess Leia or whatever. They ignore the smoke in our backyard. The National Socialist Convention. National Socialist, National Socialist. That's right. The Nazis were the National Socialists. The National Socialist Convention strategy session happened here in New York over the weekend. Here's a little clip that media is not going to play for you. You'll find it at theblaze.com of the Marxists, as the New York Times would say, making merry. We're a militant organization when it comes to the fights against gay bigotry, the, the fights against racism and sexism. The, the, the labor movement had this old saying, I don't know, I don't want to take it to is that if you can't open their minds, open their heads. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't know if we want to take it quite, quite that far on all the issues. Oh, oh, and all the issues. <laughs> oh, they're just having fun. The media went into full paranoia mode when stroller-wielding moms and lawn chair-toting grandparents joined Tea Party rallies. But militant radicals who literally say, <laughs> let's open up their heads, nothing, nothing. But there is an update coming soon on how many carrots the, uh, the ring was that Prince Humperdinck gave to, gave to Princess Buttercup. Here's my hypothesis, and this is, where, this is where we take the facts of the day, and then I put in my opinion. I want you to consider this. It's not just random. I showed you the full meaning of top-down, bottom-up, and inside-out last week on the Soros, the Soros Show. Bottom, uh, top-down, bottom-up, and inside-out method. This is what happened in Czechoslovakia post-World War II. You get all of the people in the top, the government people in top. You get the radicals, just like the radicals down here. You get them up in here into the government, and then you stir the people at the bottom. And these people rise up. This is you, by the way. These people rise up. You say, oh, my gosh, protect us. And these people come down, and they crush you. Little do you know, they're working together. It happened in post-World War II. It also uh, has happened now, I believe, Van Jones is, is calling for it. Earlier this year, in the summer, he talked about this very thing. Here he is. The top down, but it's also bottom up and inside out. Top down, bottom up. Top down, bottom up, 
inside out. I mean, these are the people that are at the bottom and they are just gonna start rising up. Center for American Progress, you know these guys, they're the guys who are putting everybody in power. Soros, by the way. Everybody in power, you've got all radicals and revolutionaries up at the top, do your own homework, investigate why these things are happening. Now, do I think this is just, oh, just crazy things happening at the airport? Of course not, it's the Glenn Beck program. Four possibilities, and here they are. This is the best way to protect America. It's the best thing for America. Huh. Really, do you think that? Do you think the scanner, this is the best way to make sure we're okay? Second thing, it's okay. You know, I don't really care about the little guy. My friends make money. My friends get rich. Okay, Soros is getting rich off of this one. Chertoff is getting rich. People in government getting rich. Three, it's the radical top-down, bottom-up, inside-out theory. They want you to rise up. They want you to be pissed off. It works to their advantage. And the fourth one is they become heroes and they create villains at the same time. What does that mean? Well, they want people to cause a ruckus. Hey, wait a minute, isn't George Soros doing the ruckus society? Anyway, cause a ruckus to demand that the scanners are out. You and I both know it's only a matter of time before something happens at an airport or on a plane. Why? Because we're unprotected, that's why. We're not using common sense. But if they put the scanners in, and then people like me or you or Tea Party or whatever demands these scanners be removed in time, not because of the scanners are there or not there, there will be another incident. And then the president can give that speech on the scanners. Oh, I was trying to protect you. But those people over there stood in the way of security. Which one is it, America? I think it's a combination of these three. It's okay, but the friends are getting rich. It's the top down, bottom up, the revolution. And we can make heroes and create villains if anything goes wrong. That's what it is. America has changed. We always thought that we knew who the good guys and the bad guys were. You know what? We don't anymore. We don't. The good guys are, not, are, are the ones who are probably doing the pat-downs. They're not the bad guys. Even though they're the guys on the front lines that you're going to yell at, most likely. Please don't yell at them. They're doing their job. Don't confuse what they're doing. Um, they're Americans, too. <laughs> they're being told by somebody else that's picking one of these four. It's a setup. Do not play into their hands. By not playing into their hands, I can't just come out here and tell you that the scanners are ridiculous and, and one of these three things are going on. No, no, I have to have a solution. Sorry to say, I do. The best viable solution I've seen. Next. We're talking um, tonight just a little bit about this, um, this nonsense that's happening in our, um, in our airports um, with, these, uh, with these body scanners. Let me tell you something. In 2001, 2002, um, I flew. I flew to um, Israel, and I flew an airline I'd never flown before. It was El Al. I, w I went on a. I was going for the press. I went on a trip. I didn't really even know where I was going exactly. Somebody else had arranged it. The ticket was purchased right away. I mean, it was. It was. E I sent off every warning signal could. They kept me and questioned me for three hours. They made me plug, up, plug in all of my broadcast equipment and everything else. I didn't know if we were going to make the plane. My wife and I, they actually walked us to our seats and we sat down and then they handed me a steak knife when, we served, when they served uh, dinner. And I looked at my wife and I said, these people get it, they, they do it right. They make sure the bad guys don't get on the plane and they don't treat everybody like a criminal. Yasek, uh, or, um, uh, Isaac Yefet, he is the uh, former director of security for El Al Airlines. He is a former uh, member of the Israeli Secret Service. And you, sir, ran, I think, what we should be doing in America here, um, running, looking people in the eye right. and having a conversation with them. Why are you flying? What, right. What's going on? Right? Exactly. What is... Interviewing. Real quick, tell, peop tell people what El Al does. 